how do you standardize the best embryology practices at F39? Again, that's a good question because once you have more than one laboratory, more than one clinic, you need to standardize the way you, you work because otherwise it's impossible to compare things. You cannot compare if they're not working exactly in the same way. And if you don't have a way to measure how they are performing, you don't have a way to correct issues or to improve things in, in the laboratories. So first of all is to have a, a SOPs in place, a standard operating procedures. Okay. So you explain in a very nice way, very simple, very clear, how you have to do things in the laboratory about every single procedure. So that's number one. But they have to be also evidence-based, as I also said before. They have to be based in evidence, on results and on science. So we have those SOPs in which we know they are working very well and then you, you have the best possible results following these, these uh, procedures in this particular way. But then you, have, you need to have some, some way of assessing, supporting, checking that everyone is doing things in the, in the, in the right way. I would say that the first point to do that is about not forcing anyone to follow your SOPs. It's about convincing them that these are the best SOPs possible. So they come to our place, they learn how to do things in our culture, in our SOP, and everyone, I mean, I, I never found anyone in, in, in 12 years in India, for example, that are not convinced about our SOPs. Once you know how to go with our SOPs, you, you, you have the conviction that they are the best possible SOPs. So you want to follow them. You don't force anyone. They, they, they want to do it because they know they are the best protocols. But you need the structure to make also regular visits, also to see that everything is working as it should be. And you need to have also benchmarking and data analysis. And we also do this, obviously, in, in 39. Every, every week, every, uh, every two weeks, every month, every, every quarter, we do all the analysis. And we also know through the data and through the analysis that everything is being done as per the SOPs. If there is any deviation in the consumption, any deviation in results, then we have that information and we can go there, check and correct. So you need both things. One is to have the right SOPs, which are simple, clear, easy to follow, evidence-based. But second, is you, have, you need to have also a structure to analyze the data and to also do audits and visits frequently. How do you maintain patient records and uh, embryology data records of the patients, sir? As per the regulation here in India, you, you need to have both uh, paper in one side and also you need to have your, your EMR, which is the electronic uh, medical recording also. So we have both systems. The first point, and this is very important, you need to have the data. Okay. So we have the data in, in paper through the whole cycle, all the details of the patient, all the, the, the details of the embryos in the, in the laboratory for different indicators. You need to have also the electronic system also to have all the information there because through that EMR, we can also do this analysis. We can extract the data and we can analyze all the rates for all the indicators every month. And you can do benchmarking and you can see if there is any deviation in the fair rates or in the blastulation rates or in the pregnancy rates. And we have all the information there. So we need to keep both, let's say, files at the same time. One is in the, in the clinics, in the laboratory. We have all these records and all these papers for the patients. And then we have also the EMR system, which has to be very powerful also to have all the information and we can extract the information and do all the analysis.